One of the next areas that we'll pay attention to is the details. And I don't just mean in the image itself, I literally mean the specific details filter. Now, HDR images are often known for a boost in the details, and a lot of folks like this ultra-realistic or even beyond realistic look that brings out the texture and the depth. Let me show you how you can do this, and you can decide how much of this effect you end up using. Where we'll start is with the HDR structure filter. Now, in this case, it's currently enabled, but since the default values are loaded, you'll see that the filter remains inactive. Now, what happens is the amount. Now, to better judge this, let's zoom to 100% so we can really see some of the rocks in the sky. As I increase the amount for the HDR structure here, you'll see that the shadows and the textures become very strong. In fact, the sky is completely fake looking at this point, so I would never go this far, but I wanted you to see what was happening. So the overall HDR structure is the big details, and we can control how soft that gets, so there's a boost in details. Let's pull back out here so you see that, as well as the amount of the overall boost, which is affecting the brightness. Now, maxed out here, this is not a good look. If you like this look, feel free to use it, but for me, I'm gonna go with a smaller amount. In fact, you can even go with a negative amount of structure, and you see that the image starts to get very soft and airy. This is not a use of HDR that many people are familiar with, but you can actually remove structure. So if the image starts to get a little bit too detailed, you can actually back that down slightly and play with the overall softness slider. I find, for example, that a little bit of negative structure and a little less of a boost in the bright areas there looks better. But what I do find useful is the ability for some microstructure. Let's bring that up really far there, and you see it goes after the small details. So we can get a good balance there, and I'll back that down ever so slightly. Let's take a look at the whole image, and if we toggle that on and off, you'll notice that what that's doing is putting some depth and detail in. One of the things that I'd suggest is consider controlling this a little bit more. Rather than actually putting this here on the base layer, I'm gonna turn it off for now, and I'll reserve that HDR structure for an adjustment layer, a technique we'll talk about later. You can add another adjustment layer to the entire image, and then add separate effects. The benefits of that adjustment layer is that you can paint away or mask certain parts of the image. Now, let's come down to another HDR area, the details boost. Let's zoom back in to 100% so it's easier to see things. As I bring out details, you'll see separate sliders for the large details, the medium details, and the small details. Notice that this really gets more aggressive. So, for example, let's set the medium and large down, and you'll see that a small details boost is going after some of the finest textures in the image itself. You'll wanna make sure that you let the image finish processing so you can judge that. That's working nicely there. I might put a little bit into the medium areas as well, but I generally avoid the large areas, which is a bit too aggressive for my taste. Additionally, if you move the protection slider over and the masking slider over, this will help you avoid adding details to soft areas like the clouds. In this case, if I toggle that on and off, you'll see that the change is happening in the rocks. We're not seeing a big shift up in the sky here, rather much more control, and it's going more after the rock textures. That works nicely. Let's go ahead and fit that image to screen, and that little boost in the details there is nice. If I toggle that on and off, you'll see it's subtle, but it just brings out a bit of sharpness in the image. We're not actually sharpening anything here, but what we're doing is we're boosting the details. This is similar to an adjustment that many people refer to as clarity. However, this is targeting the areas based on dynamic range. So think of this as selective contrast, and you have the ability to better target it to large areas, medium areas, and the smallest of details. Finding the right mix is gonna depend upon the image you're working with, but this is a great adjustment and one that you should make with small changes in increment. Be sure to zoom in to 100% to accurately judge and then pull back out to evaluate the entire image.